For this installation, you will need a Phillips screwdriver, power drill, 5 32-inch drill bit, 9 64-inch drill bit, pliers, crescent wrench, quarter-inch nut driver, masking tape, black electrical tape, scissors, and a flashlight. Included in the kit, the main gum tray assembly, anti-tilt device, left and right hanging rails, retainer clips, spiral couplers, and an alcohol swab. The first step in any installation is to turn off the vending machine and unplug it. To remove the old gum and mint tray, you will need to unscrew the two bolts located on the left and right side of the drop bucket. These bolts allow the gum and mint tray to swing on its hinge. Then, remove the old tray. Remove the gum and mint motors from the vend bucket. Remove the bracket assembly that houses the gum and mint tray motors. Do this by removing the two screws on the bottom left and right hand silver brackets. Then, apply a little force to detach the motor board from the drop bucket. Unplug the motor board from the machine as shown. Remove the existing wiring harness from the motors. The wiring harness may be discarded. Use your flathead screwdriver or a quarter inch nut driver to remove each of the motors from the metal bracket. Next, use your pliers to remove the spiral coupler from each of the five motors. Install the motors on the new tray with the supplied hardware. When installing the motors, there will be three holes that H0 and H4 motors can go into. Select the holes closest to the center of the tray as shown. Proceed to install the motors onto the new gum tray with the supplied screws and hex nuts. Use an electric screwdriver to make sure the motors are tightly secured in place. To install each divider, locate both of the metal legs on the divider. Line the divider up with the two small holes under each grate. Lock the metal leg into the grate. If inserted properly, the small hole underneath each grate should be partially visible. The extra slots in the grates can be used to vend larger or smaller items in the future. Repeat the previous steps for the rest of the dividers. Next, you will need to detach the cabinet harness from the machine. Free the factory wiring harness from the factory harness retainers. Drop the wire down to the machine floor. Begin installing the new harness starting with the plug for motor H0 as shown in the diagram. While looking at the back of the tray, locate motor H0. Be sure to install the harness so that each keyway slides over and snaps into place over the motor prongs. Turn the tray upside down with the open end facing towards you. There are a series of holes on the second support brace on the right hand side of the tray in line with selection H0. Using two of the number eight by one quarter inch pan head screws, attach the bracket as shown. Use the supplied wire ties to secure the cable to the mounting plate. On all the machines, you will need to attach the cable clamp to the bracket using the rightmost screw hole as shown. Make sure the cable clamp is facing up and is pointing towards the motors. If working on a National 167, the cabinet harness for a late model National 167 looks like this. You will attach this harness to the motor harness using the supplied adapter. If working on a National 147, remove the board attached to the motor bracket as shown. Use pliers to pinch the plastic standoffs from the bottom of the bracket. The National 157 and 167 do not use this board. 
Attach the small control board removed previously to the new bracket on the bottom of the tray. Use the supplied wire ties to secure the cable to the mounting plate. Home the motors. The factory gum and mint tray motors spin counterclockwise while they will need to spin clockwise for the new tray. This must be done before installing the coils to ensure proper alignment of the coils. Place the gum tray near the bottom of the machine. Attach the wiring harness to the cabinet harness to connect the power. Proceed to plug in and turn on the machine. To home the motors, you will need to test bend the machine, so push the test button on the control panel. If working on a National 147, push the test bend button. If the display says locked, push the arrow up until it displays code. Push the right arrow key and it will say enter code. Enter 0000 and hit enter. The machine will be unlocked. You will need to test bend each gum tray motor twice. Starting with H0, go through testing each motor twice. H1, H2, H3, and H4. When finished, Push the exit button on the control panel. Power the machine back off and unplug it again. Next, take a supplied spiral coupler. Install couplers vertically on the two leftmost motors, H0 and H1, making sure that the hole in the coupler is facing upward. H2 through H4 should be installed at the 10 o'clock position, which is the first indexing slot to the left from the vertical position. The final result should look similar to this. The two displayed rails are for H0 and H1. Position the first rail in the H0 space. Of the two holes located at the front of the H0 space, you will need to place the rail pin into the second hole. Place the rail pin for the H1 space into the only hole in that space. Installing ramp rails for all models. Starting with H2, you will need to first insert the rail through the spiral before you screw the rail into place. You will need to screw the rail into the tray using the middle two screw holes. For H3, use the bottom screw holes on the rail to secure it into place. For H4, you will be using the first two for this installation. Use the bottom screw holes on the rail to secure it into place. Next, snap the coil retaining clip onto the H0 coil as shown. To install the coil onto the machine, push the retaining clip slightly so that the end of the coil can be easily inserted into the spiral coupler. Repeat this step for each coil. For H2, H3, and H4 rails, pull up the coil at the back of the tray and snap the coil retaining clip into place and insert the coil into the spiral coupler as you did before. The final result will look like this. There are a series of holes on the second support brace on the right-hand side of the tray. The H0 and H1 slot has multiple holes along the bottom that will be used. Take the H1 faceplate and position it over the middle hole of the H1 position. Screw it into place, but don't secure it yet. Take your H0 faceplate with a hole in the bottom and position it over the second hole to the right as circled in the video. Screw the faceplate into place, but don't secure it tightly yet. Center the loose faceplate over the opening of the tray. When it's centered, secure it tightly in place with a Phillips head screwdriver. Repeat this step for the other faceplate. 